to welcome to my YouTube channel called Sweet Tips. Today what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate my uh, vacuum filtration system here. It's uh, not an essential piece of equipment, but it does come in handy when you have some, uh, some, some material that needs to be filtered. And uh, gravity filtration is not enough, or it's just going to take too much time. Now what I'm going to do now is uh, show you the individual components, how I assemble them, and then demonstrate how the system works. Before I take you out and look at the actual unit, I'd like to uh, point out the main components in this sketch that I've made. Here I have a 8-gallon uh, air compressor tank that acts as a vacuum reservoir. Here I have a uh, HVAC, an air conditioning vacuum pump that draws off of the air compressor tank. Here I have connected a hose that comes up connects to a T and I have a vacuum gauge to tell how much vacuum I'm drawing during the uh, system operation. It goes over here to another T and splits off. It goes up to a vacuum switch. The vacuum switch is connected to 110 volt electricity and controls the voltage going to the vacuum pump. When it reaches a set point the vacuum switch will turn the electricity off and stop the pump. I think I've got it set at 7 inches of vacuum. It comes back on at 5 inches of vacuum. So it sits there in cycles between 5 and 7 inches of vacuum. Here I have a T that goes to an isolation valve that acts as a vent. So I can vent the vapors out of here and uh, clear out the vapors from getting to the uh, vacuum switch. I have another isolation valve here so that I can isolate the vacuum switch from the main vacuum circuit. Here I have another T. It goes down to another isolation valve on the end of a, and there's a hose that comes out, goes to the first flask. At the other side of the T, I've got another isolation valve connected to a hose that goes to a second flask so that I can use two filter flasks at, at a time on, when the system's in operation. That's a basic rundown of what the, uh, how the system is, uh, how it works. I'm going to take you out now and show you the actual unit out in the uh, shop there. The first component that we uh, want to look at here is the 8-gallon uh, air compressor tank. It used to have an uh, air compressor sitting on top of it up here. I removed that and replaced the air compressor with a HVAC vacuum pump. I bought this air compressor for 30 bucks. The compressor motor was burnt out and the compressor was no longer any good, so I removed it and put an HVAC vacuum pump up here. I connected the line right here from the uh, air compressor to the vacuum pump and it goes down here and draws off of the uh, top of the air compressor tank. When I made this I had there's a, a one-way check valve down in here that only allowed the air to go down and prevented the air from coming back up. So I had to stick a drill bit down in there and drill that check valve out so that I could go ahead and get the vacuum pump to draw the air out of the tank up through the pipe this way. The next component I want to look at is this air hose here. I just uh, connected a hose to the uh, fitting here that uh, connects to the uh, compressor tank and it comes up and goes up through the back back here and connects to the first component up here which is the T and this T connects to a line that runs to a vacuum gauge that I bought at Harbor Freight. It's for testing uh, diesel engines and it's uh, perfect for this application. Right after the T for the vacuum gauge is another T and as I pointed out there's an isolation valve here. It runs through this line, goes down underneath, loops around, comes back up and goes to my vacuum switch here. This vacuum switch is 110 volts it's operated by the vacuum of the system. It shuts off when the vacuum reaches seven inches. And when the vacuum drains off and it gets down to five inches, it shuts the contacts and starts the uh, compressor motor up, or the uh, vacuum motor up again. See, I've got it plugged into a 110 outlet here. Comes up, goes to the switch. Vacuum switch inside looks like this. A little brass fitting down there can be adjusted. I think you screw it down and it makes the uh, vacuum go higher. You screw it up and it makes the vacuum uh, go Coming lower. outside the other side of the switch here, the vacuum switch is a line that goes down and it just plugs into the uh, vacuum pump down here and operates the vacuum pump. 
All right, coming back down the vacuum circuit again, we uh, we got a vent valve here that allows me to, uh, while the system is operation, in operation, open up this uh, this valve here. This is just a ball valve. I don't know if you can see in there or not. It's just a ball valve with a steel ball inside of a uh, brass casing. Anyway, I can open this up and allow fresh air to come down in here and uh, vent that line out so that... Uh, we can protect the vacuum switch from vapors. Coming back down the line again here, we come down and loop back around. We come back to this component here, which was the T with the isolation valve for the switch. And we come over here and we find another T. And it has a uh, another isolation valve that goes out and comes around here and can be plugged in to our, uh, to our filter flask. All right, coming back to the system again. We come back to our isolation valve for flask number one. We come over here and we got another ball valve here that isolates uh, flask number two. It comes out, it's just got a uh, piece of sturdy line here that can go to the uh, second filter flask. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to place the system in operation. Make sure my vent valve up here is shut. Make sure my uh, vacuum switch isolation valve is open. And then I open the isolation valves to each of the flasks. Now I'll add some uh, distilled water to I've got some filter papers in each of the funnels here. I'll go ahead and add a little distilled water and moisten those. And I'm going to reach down and turn the pump on. Okay, I'm going to add some silver nitrate solution and go ahead and filter some silver nitrate solution and see if we can get the system to operate properly. And there you heard the uh, vacuum pump turn off. That's because the vacuum uh, got up to seven inches. And the switch sensed that and went ahead and cut power to the pump. Okay, the system's in operation now. You'll see the vacuum drop down around five and then the uh, pump will actuate and start back up. And there it shut off. That's one complete cycle. As the vacuum uh, drops down to around 5 inches, it'll uh, close the uh, vacuum switch and the uh, pump will start back up again, or the vacuum pump will start back up again. There it goes. Now, if I have some uh, a solution that has a lot of particulate in it, and the filter gets loaded up, and the uh, flow through the funnel or through the filter slows down, what I can do is come over here and vent the uh, vent the system, get the vacuum down below five, and then come down here and shut the isolation valve, then shut my vent, and what will happen? It's uh, Eliminated the uh, switch out of the circuit now so that the vacuum will go ahead and climb all the way up to a full vacuum. And you can see there that the uh, that high vacuum is pulling that liquid through that filter pretty quickly. And here you see the uh, vacuum was set real high. And uh, what we've done is uh, punctured or the filter papers failed. Now the filter paper failed when I ran the vacuum up real high like that. This is the reason we like it set down low between 7 and 5 inches to prevent this from happening. Perfect example of why we don't want that vacuum running way up high when we're filtering some of these solutions. And this will conclude the... Uh, the video on my uh, vacuum filtration system. I built this thing for probably under $400. I think the switch was $100. 
Uh, the table here was about 90 at Harvard Freight. I bought the switch on eBay. Uh, the uh, tank was 30 bucks. The uh, vacuum uh, pump itself was, uh, I'm going to say, $100 nowadays. And all the uh, fittings and hoses came to about $50. So roughly about $400 for a uh, vacuum filtration system. But uh, it sure does come in handy when we got some heavy-duty filtering to do. And this will conclude the uh, video of my vacuum filtration system. As you can see, it's not that difficult to uh, build one. Uh, it's not that expensive. And it sure comes in handy when you got some heavy filtering to do. I check my comments section daily, and I try to get to, uh, to it and answer those questions that you all have. I enjoy uh, sharing my knowledge, and I try to answer those questions as best as I can. I've got some more videos coming up here. Uh, so I've got, I've got some platinum coming that should be very interesting. It'll be my first time doing it. I've got some uh, jeweler's uh, filings and clippings that I'll be doing here in the near, near future. And I got some more plaster gold in, and I'll be doing some more experiments with that, trying to get it to go in a solution uh, at different temperatures uh, with the uh, bleach and hydrochloric acid. So uh, please stay tuned. I got more coming. And I'd like to thank all my subscribers. Thank y'all for watching, and uh, that's it. Thank you.